Over the past five years, I've spent a considerable amount of time developing designs for 3D printing. I use 3D printers in my career, my business, and for all sorts of items I use on a daily basis. In that time, I've developed ways of designing which can reduce print failures, minimize material use, and maximize the benefits that 3D printers can offer. In this video, I'm gonna take you through 10 tips and tricks in just 10 minutes, which will allow you to rapidly start optimizing your designs for your 3D printer. I'll also be randomly giving away three of my Bluetooth speakers to three lucky people who subscribe between now and my first 1,000 subs in celebration of one year since the launch of this channel. So stick around to the end for competition details. But without further ado, let's start the clock and get started jumping in with tip number one. Starting with the basics, your 3D printer is not magic and it can't print in midair. This is why designs which require large overhangs need supports which ultimately end up as waste material. By tweaking your design so that it incorporates angles which build up to the overhang, you can alleviate the need for support whilst also increasing the strength of your part. Equally, by designing with a particular print orientation in mind, you can build complex parts which require no supports at all. This is ideal when you will be printing lots of them and waste material starts to become more of a concern. A prime example of this is my mini speaker, which consists of three primary parts, none of which use any support. Looking at the inner casing, you can see how a combination of curved edges, chamfers and smart orientation meant that parts which would normally require support don't. Equally, breaking down the whole product into separate components makes it more viable for 3D printing. This brings us neatly into tip number two, knowing the right tolerances to have parts fit together. There's nothing more frustrating than waiting 20 hours for your two parts to print and then realizing that the tolerance is too tight and the parts don't fit. It's important to leave a gap to account for inaccuracies within the print dictated by the accuracy of the 3D printer itself. You want to find the sweet spot where the parts can slide together but without being so loose they jiggle around. In my experience from using a multitude of different machines, a gap of 0.4 millimeters is the perfect balance of an easy and consistent fit, but one that also remains tight enough to not move around. Now the key to ensuring this works is to make sure your prints don't warp and peel away from the print bed, which will completely throw off your tolerances, bringing us to tip and trick number three. Warping is the biggest issue with 3D printing, especially with common materials like PLA. It's caused by the part shrinking by as much as 3% as it cools, which forces it to peel up from the build plate. Now, whilst the primary way of alleviating this problem is to use an abrasive bed material coupled with a flexible build plate to help getting it off after, it's also possible to eliminate a lot of this issue at a design stage. This involves having the largest flat surface down on the build plate and curving the edges of your design. You can imagine that as a part shrinks, having a pointed edge is going to be more drastically affected compared to a rounded corner. This is why adding a fillet to all the edges on the vertical axis of your part is always a good idea and in my opinion, tends to be more visually appealing. Continuing along with the basics, tip number four is to just be aware of your tool. Keeping in mind the nozzle diameter of your 3D printer is essential to ensuring details from your design aren't lost and parts don't fail from using the wrong layer heights. When you design small features such as fittings, threads or text, if you're messing with details on the X and Y axis, which are less than the diameter of your nozzle, they're probably going to get lost. And that means when you do text, you want to make sure that the smallest parts of your lettering are ideally no smaller than twice the diameter of your nozzle. On the z-axis or vertical axis, you have the potential for greater detail as you can go down to layer heights less than 0.1 millimeters. And this will, you know, obviously increase the length of your prints, but knowing the level of detail you're using is key when deciding which layer height to use. For example, in this part, I 3D printed a thread to allow it to screw into other existing parts. The thread consists of teeth which follow sharp angle changes. Therefore, I use a layer height of 0.2 millimeters or the thread detail isn't accurate enough for it to screw into the off-the-shelf part. 
The final tip before we launch into the more exciting elements which will take your design to the very next tier is to design models with multiple parts within a single CAD file. This point is going to be more SOLIDWORKS specific but still applies to other CAD softwares. So when designing a product with multiple parts, if you have them all in a single part file but as separate bodies rather than parts in an assembly, then when you go back to edit and tweak earlier dimensions, the rest of the model will automatically adjust making it much quicker and easier. Now it's time for me to share with you the best tricks I've learned from my years of tinkering so you can use them in your designs right now. First and foremost is the ability to make parts which clasp together without the need for any tools or fasteners. This reduces cost, assembly time and makes your products just that bit more professional. So most mass-produced plastic items are made using the injection molded process, where snap together clips are used all the time to assemble parts together. Unfortunately, the level of detail and strength achieved in injection molded parts is not the same as it is in 3D printing. However, after messing around with numerous iterations, I've landed on a design which has consistently achieved a strong but removable clasp. I've uploaded this case design to my website so that you can check the dimensions and copy the clip design for use in your own projects. Sometimes though, when more weight is involved, it's preferable to use fastening methods such as nuts and bolts to hold your parts together. One trick here is you can actually screw into the plastic if you get your tolerances right. And this brings us to tip number seven, securing parts using fasteners. Now whilst there are special screws with threads which are specifically designed for cutting through into plastic, I found that by setting the hole the screw goes into with just the right tolerance, a normal machine screw will also work. It's important to make sure that the wall thickness you set up in the slicer software is suitably thick enough for the screw threads to carve into. For example, these M2.5 screws cut perfectly into a hole diameter of 2.15 millimeters. And surprisingly, the screw can be screwed and unscrewed multiple times before it begins to wear. If you are using different screws, then a test print with numerous holes or with slightly different sizes can be a quick method for establishing the right sized hole. This method is capable of holding a lot more weight, such as when I've used it in this homemade power supply, which contains a heavy transformer. Moving on to tip number eight. There's many circumstances where you want to have text on a design. I find that a depth or raise of 0.8 millimeters is ideal to have good legibility and not so far out from the design it struggles to print without supports if you're doing it on the side of the part. You can actually print deboss text onto the face touching the build plate and it comes out well as it's technically a bridged overhang. Fonts with clean sharp lines tend to come out better. I like using Montserrat, Go Bold and Dharma Gothic which are all available for free to download. I also find that generally debossed text where the font is recessed into the part it looks cleaner and sharper. Layer direction can also play a part in how it looks, which brings me on to point number nine, part orientation. 3D printed parts are much stronger perpendicular to the way the layers are running. When designing a part that needs functional strength, bear in mind which way the layer lines are going to run. Here we can see the exact same cuboids printed in two orientations, one with the layers running across the whole length of the cuboid and one with the layers running up the length of it. You can see when we try to break the part with the layer lines running the length of the cuboid, it's much harder to break. Sometimes you have no choice but to print a certain orientation, in which case you can use slicer settings such as increasing extrusion width above 100%, which improves layer adhesion and merges them into one another, creating a much stronger part. For example, here we have that same cuboid printed in the weaker orientation, but with an extrusion width of 133%. It's noticeably harder to break, and so this can be a great workaround if you're forced to print something a certain way due to overhangs or just tricky shapes. Finally, tip and trick number 10 is to use the iterative process as efficiently as possible. Design is all about iterations and it's quite rare when designing something to fulfill a certain purpose that you're gonna get it perfect first time. And that's okay. 
So when designing my mini Bluetooth speakers, I did at least 30 iterations until I had everything as I wanted it. Looking back though, there were times when I was only making a change to a very small part of the overall design and so I could have saved time and plastic printing just a single section of that part. To do this, delete around the bits that haven't changed for a quick partial print and then only print the full iteration when you're happy you have that aspect nailed. And there you have it, 10 tips and tricks to get you designing for 3D printing efficiently and effectively. If you're interested in winning one of the free Bluetooth speakers, then please enter the competition in the description and make sure you're subscribed so that you're eligible to win. I'll be giving them out once I hit my first 1,000 subscribers. With that being said, good luck to you. Thank you for watching and honestly, thank you all so much for your support. If you enjoyed this video or learned something new, then please like and subscribe for more 3D printing and design videos. But until then, keep designing, keep making, and keep on creating.